Good morning. We are glad that you are here this morning. <laughs> Let's praise God together in song. How do you explain? Church of Christ this morning. So glad you're here, as Philip has already said. But we're thankful for our guest, thankful for every member, and we want you to participate in this worship assembly. I hope you picked up a, a Levy bulletin. It's just full of information and activities. If you just read down the side of it, you'll see what's going on today. Just a lot of things, a lot of ministries involved. And we want you to feel very comfortable and welcome here, even if you have children, small children, 
You're very welcome to stay in here, but there are training rooms in the side of this building, of this room, for you to take your children. We love them. We have lots of kids, and we hope that you'll feel very comfortable staying in here. If you need uh, attended nursery, go through the middle doors and down the hall, and uh, Usher will escort you to attended nursery. Now, we want you to do something for us, too. There's three cards you'll find right in front of you in the pew, and we'd like for you to complete those. If you're visiting with us, there's a guest card. If members, we want you to complete your registration card, too. And then if you have a prayer request, it's read, and we'd like for you to complete that. Or a thanksgiving. And then drop those in the offering plate when it comes around. And at family time, at the, at the uh, end of the service, then we'll be praying for those. One of the shepherds will pray for you. And also the shepherds will take these cards and pray for them during the week for you personally. We're just glad you're here. We're thankful that we can be a part of this congregation and hope that you'll feel that you can too. We want to stand, so please stand as we continue our worship. I believe in Jesus.
to be able to to see and understand and grasp all the good things and the blessings that come from you, especially through your son Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for our sins. Father, we're so thankful that you have seen fit to call us your children. And we, we pray that we'll always be thankful and aware of what a great blessing that that is. And Father, as a result of this, we pray that you always help us to walk in the light and live the way that you want us to live. Father, we're so thankful that we live in this country. We uh, pray for our leaders. We pray, Father, that, uh, that you... 
uh, will bring about a, uh, an awakening among us as citizens of this country that we uh, need to follow you and, and be uh, a people of, of right and, and morals. And Father, we know that there's so much conflict going on uh, between different groups of people. And Father, we know and realize that the answer is Jesus. And that uh, if they will in, embrace Jesus and uh, what is right and, and how that you look at people and realize that you are not a respecter of, of people, that you love everyone, and that we in turn as Christians should do the same. Father, we just pray that you will bring up leaders that honor you and honor Jesus, and that uh, we can have that moral awakening in our, our country that you, uh, we know that you desire. Father, we're so thankful for this church and for the church the world over, and Father, we uh, are thankful for the love that we have for one another, and we pray, Father, that you will increase this and fill us with your spirit. And go with us as we continue to worship you at this time is our prayer through Jesus. Amen. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is a great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will.
Let's pray. Father God, what an awesome God you are and powerful. We just sang about coming to the table. You know, it's hard to find the right words, and we just ask that you'll listen to our hearts, Father. We are so, we rejoice, and we are so thankful for your magnificent plan that Jesus was a sacrificial lamb. And we are so thankful for his obedience to you, Father, as we remember that at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bow again. Father God, we, you know, as we rejoice in your magnificent plan, it's just the beginning. And we are so thankful that your son and our brother walked through the valley of death, through the pain and suffering, and died for our sins. But we know that's only the beginning of the plan, and the rest of the plan is when you raise us up from the grave and we spend eternity with you In Jesus name amen
Let's pray again. Father God, we love you, and we just uh, ask that you'll look at our hearts. There are so many ways that we show you that we love you back, and we just ask that you'll look at our hearts and that we will be open to you now, and we will show our love by giving back to you for all the blessings you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. I will be reading 2 Peter 1, 8 through 9. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have, a, have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting they have been cleansed from their past sins. We'll let our kids head to Bible Hour as we stand and sing together. For to be like the blessed Redeemer, this is my
Good morning, church. I'd like to ask you to stand right back up and greet everybody that's around you for a minute or two, especially if, if you don't recognize someone. That's good. Thank you very much. That's a good noise to hear. I think heaven's going to be a, a little bit noisy. How about you? Amen to that? All right, we are continuing our focus on following Jesus by, excuse me, by looking into the text of 2 Peter chapter 1. Get your Bibles and turn over there. Brett read our two verses that we're going to focus in this morning. This has been a, a study that's lasted several weeks. I hope that you've enjoyed digging into this context because as I've spoken to you about each week, I believe that Peter has a great deal to say here about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what that looks like lived out in our lives, the discipleship process, which is, as we framed it, a training process that we are to undergo to be a follower of Jesus. Scott McKnight, in one life, Jesus calls we follow, said, those who aren't following Jesus aren't his followers. It's that simple. Followers follow, and those who don't follow aren't followers. To follow Jesus means to follow Jesus into a society where justice rules, where love shapes everything. To follow Jesus means to take up his dream and work for it. And as we've gone through this text, and it was Olympic time, remember we discussed taking up a, a dream like an Olympic dream and following it and what that meant, the training that was involved in that kind of commitment, the training that led to muscle memory where those athletes could engage in their specific competition and not have to be concerned about whether they were ready, whether they knew what they were doing. We talked about some divers who gave credit to God, said they found their identity not in the fact that they could dive on that kind of uh, athletic level, but their identity was in Christ Jesus. But we mentioned the training that went into that, and when they got ready to dive, their muscle memory kicked in gear. They didn't have to be concerned whether their body would perform or function in the manner in which it needed to to engage in that competition because they'd done all the training, and their, their muscles were, were ready. Memory kicked in, and they performed. Now, our following Jesus isn't a performance, but it is it does involve training where we train our spiritual muscles so that they're ready to kick in when we face temptation, when they're ready to kick in, when indeed there are opportunity to praise God, serve Him, serve other people. We don't have to wonder if we're ready because we've been trained to follow Jesus. And as a follower of Jesus, when the time comes, we're ready to engage. We're ready to serve. We're ready to be like our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's training. And if we don't engage in that kind of discipleship training, then we're not going to be ready regardless of the game we talk. You know, I'm getting a little older. And I can talk a good game but because I am a little older, Doug, you, you know anything about this at all? Nothing, right? Philip, you don't know anything about it? I don't think so. You guys are younger than I am. But you can talk a good game, but sometimes you can't back it up. You ever been there? It happens to me more and more often. Yeah, back in the day I could do it. Maybe I could still do it. No, I can't. You got to be able to back it up. 
when we talk about honoring God, serving God, praising God, Jesus is Lord, do we back it up? That's where this discipleship training comes in. That's why this text, where we add to our faith the qualities that Peter defines in this context is so significant because that is training. We are adding to our faith to train ourselves to be a follower of Jesus, to become more like our master, to go through that process of getting stronger, healthier, and growing. And that is a lifetime process which never ends regardless of our age. Because unlike athletics, our relationship with Jesus in our discipleship process should grow richer and stronger the more we are engaged in it. And the older we get, it should be more and more of who we are because we've had the opportunity to spend more and more time with Jesus. Muscle memory. We're adding to our faith all of these wonderful qualities that will help us grow and be like Jesus. It's training. And when we get to the two verses in 8 and 9, after Peter has listed all of those qualities, then he kind of takes a negative t- turn on things a little bit. He says, if you don't have these things, then there are some negative things that will occur in your life. What he's basically saying is, if we haven't trained, if we haven't gone through the discipleship process, continually adding to our faith these wonderful qualities, then we're not going to be able to back our game up. The words that we speak, we won't be able to back them up. We won't be ready. We'll be ineffective. We won't be able to produce. We won't be able to be the kind of follower that Jesus wants us to be. We haven't grasped his dream and lived it as our own. And so he looks at them in a negative way. Well, I'm going to turn that around. If we are adding to our faith and we're possessing these qualities more and more then what will happen is number one it will produce effective and productive discipleship within us that's what we've been talking about during this entire study this is kind of the end game we want to produce within us more effective and more productive discipleship so that we will be able to represent our savior in every circumstance at our best So that he will then live within us and so people will see Jesus in us as we conduct our daily business. If these qualities that Peter defines that we've been studying over these weeks are not within us in increasing quality, that's what he teaches, then this won't happen. So we have to continue growing. That's what the the phrase increasing quality means. We have to continue to grow. We can't sit down. We can't decide, I've trained enough. We must continue in our relationship with Jesus in the process to build and to strengthen our spirituality and our relationship. And they will then produce effective and productive discipleship within us. Do you ever wonder why you struggle sometimes? Why? You can't seem to have that relationship that you really desire in Christ Jesus. Well, it could be that you're not adding these qualities in increasing measure into your life. These are all measurables. Now, we've talked in those terms as we've looked at this text from the very beginning. They're measurables. These qualities add to your faith goodness and knowledge and self-control. All of these Qualities are measurables in our life. In other words, we can see if we're growing in them or not. If we're honest, we can know if we are adding these to our life in increasing measure. We will be able to measure and see and tell. That's why this text is so valuable. Because it really does lead us to a self-examination, which is a biblical idea to consider where we are and to look deeply into our lives and to determine how our relationship with Christ is going. If I am having difficulties in one area today and 
a year from now I am continuing to have the difficulties in those same areas, then I perhaps am not growing in that area. And that is not just true of spiritually conversations, but it's true of every kind of conversation, right? You go to the doctor. What does he say? You need to do some things, son. Come back in a year. I go back in a year and my cholesterol and all those things are still up. He said, you didn't do what I told you. Isn't that true? They're all measurables. This is what we're talking about spiritually here. They're measurables. And we can know one way or the other if we're increasing in these qualities or not. Again, this is why this context is so significant. And that's why we see if we're growing in these areas, then our discipleship is growing. Our ability to be a witness to Christ is more effective. Our ability to produce the fruit of the Spirit in our life is greater than it was. And that's what this means. Three things. What does this look like? Produce fruit of the Spirit. All the wonderful fruit of the Spirit, the kindness, joy, goodness, graciousness, all of the things that are listed by Paul in that context that contrast to the works of the flesh. We will produce those in our life. People will see faith and love and kindness and patience and goodness in our life. And then as Paul speaks to Timothy, we'll be thoroughly equipped unto every good work. We'll be ready. That muscle memory will kick in. We'll be ready to go, get on the battlefield, to use another biblical metaphor, to get out there and serve Jesus. We'll be equipped. We'll be ready. We won't have to be concerned about that. It's like, again, another metaphor for the, the, the students here. You're ready for a test. You go in there and you ace it because, hey, I got this. I've trained. I've studied. I've done my work. Equipped into every good work, productive discipleship. And then again, we'll be like our teacher, a verse you've heard me mention almost every week, Luke 6, 40. Those, if a disciple, when fully trained, will be like his teacher. Our teacher is Jesus. When we're fully trained as his disciple, we will be like him. We talk about our world out here, and the, the, the negative sort of, I guess you would say, impact. <laughs> I'm struggling to find the right word. But, but the negative impact that sometimes churches have on the world, at least how we're perceived, our reputations. And people say, well, this church does that, and this church, if we are simply being like our teacher, this is what discipleship training leads us to, following Jesus to be his follower, to take up his dream, and to be like him, then we're not going to be engaged in any of that. We're going to be like Christ was. And it is just out there helping people where they are, offering them a, whole, a word of hope. Instead of speaking the language of hate, we're going to speak the language of love. Instead of going out here trying to be engaged in divisive and hateful activities full of anger and strife, we're going to go out and extend the love of Christ to try to bring people together in Him. We're going to be like our teacher. So that's what all of this looks like in our life. That's why it's so significant. And then Peter says also that if we do possess these in increasing measure, he, again, he ne- puts a negative twist on it, but I'm turning it around. They will empower and enable us to know and fully embrace who we are. Now he frames this in the terms of if we forget these things, We will be nearsighted and blind. Those are pretty strong words. These are bold statements by Peter to those who were originally the, the hearers of this message. And as we visited this context, they were in danger from false teachers. Peter, if you continue reading in this text, he says, I'm going to keep reminding you about these things as long as I'm alive because you need to hear them. Because you're going to be faced with some difficulties. There are going to be people who are going to want to preach to you another gospel. You've got to be able to be disciplined enough to understand and discern that. So I'm going to keep talking to you about these things before I fold this old tent up. That's what Peter told him in the balance of the chapter. And he said, I don't want you to forget who you are. You become nearsighted and blind. And so... Conversely, what 
these qualities will enable us to do is to know and fully embrace who we are. Next slide. We'll remember that we belong to Jesus, right? We'll remember who he is in our life, what that means, what that stands for, what that calls for, and we'll embrace that. We'll just make that our identity. We, again, we've talked in these terms about our identity. Who are you? Who are you primarily in your life? What comes first? If someone were to say, tell me who you are, where would you start? I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a Razorback fan. What's important to you? Shouldn't above all of that be our relationship with Christ? Our identity rooted primarily first and foremost, in Him. We embrace that. We don't hold back. We're not ashamed. We're not afraid. We embrace it full force. That's what discipleship training, following Jesus, what Peter is teaching us will produce. We add these things to our life in increasing measure. More and more and more. We're growing in goodness and knowledge and self-control and love and joy. All of the qualities that flow out of a relationship with Jesus just continues to build us up. We embrace it as who we are. Now, again, he looks at it from a negative perspective. You'll forget. You'll be nearsighted and blind. Now, nearsighted and blind means that we stumble. We can't see clearly. We can't see a, a path ahead of us to walk on in a clear way. And so we stumble, we fall, we have great difficulty. And that is exactly what this means in terms of our failure to add these, to, add these qualities to our life in increasing measure. As far as our relationship with Christ, as far as following Jesus, that journey will be filled with difficulties and, and getting off the path because we're near-sighted and blind. We can't see the, the way clearly. Remembering, I believe, then is crucial. Remembering is a central theme throughout the entire Bible. I don't know if you thought about that. You know, we talk from time to time about different ways of studying Scripture. There are themes and threads that run through the Bible. And I, I, I like that. I think it's pretty awesome that we can see these themes and just follow them all the way through the Bible. Of course, one of the biggest ones is redemption. That's the whole narrative of Scripture is we're being redeemed in Christ Jesus back to the relationship God wants us to have. But there are other themes and threads through the Bible, and one of them is remembering. We don't speak much in those terms. But remembering to God's people has always been important. You think about some of these references, and I'm just throwing up some scriptures to you. Next slide, please. And you will see what I'm talking about. Numbers 15, 39. It's an interesting little verse that talks about adding tassels onto your garments. in an Old Testament setting, long time ago. But adding tassels to your garment to, as a way to remember that you belong to God and what His commandments are. Uh, there was, I'm dating myself, but... A long time ago, there was a group called a cappella vocal band. Anybody remember that? They had a song, What's Your Tag Say? You remember that, Doug? What's your tag say? Who do you obey? And it was about labels. It was about clothes. Don't sing it. It didn't sound like that. Hey, man, I think I'll audition for them now. But it talked about labels and, you know, back all these designer labels and what's your tag say? What, what does it say when somebody sees something on your, your shirt about you. And way back long time ago in Numbers back in the day, Moses is saying, put some tassels on your clothes. Let it say something about you and who you belong to so that you can remember. Remember. Remember you belong to God. Deuteronomy eleven eighteen through 20. You may be more familiar with this text because it's a text that teaches us when we're walking along in the evening with our family to talk about God, to, to uh, bind His words on us, our foreheads. 
uh, to put them on the doorpost of our house. It's all about remembering whose you are. Remembering is crucial. And then Exodus 13, 3, Passover. Passover, right? That was instituted to remember what God had done for them. And then we see one in Judges chapter 2, verse 10, that's a little bit different because the Scripture says there, there was a generation of folks who grew up that didn't remember. <laughs> they did not remember God. And then they got in a lot of trouble. The whole story of Judges. They failed. They got into trouble. And God bailed them out. And then they failed again. Why? Because they did not remember. And then Luke twenty two nineteen. 19, this do. What? This do in, in remembrance of me or memory of me. We come around, gather to take communion every week so that we can remember what Christ has done for us. Now, remembering is crucial in this context of Peter because he says, if you don't remember, you're going to fail in your discipleship, nearsighted and blind forgetting, he says, that you, in fact, have had your sins washed away by Jesus. In other words, he said, you're going to forget how to live like the redeemed. And when you forget how to live like the redeemed, then you're going to live any old way that you want. And if you live any old way that you want, then there's absolutely no way to follow Jesus. No matter what you say, no matter what kind of lip service you offer, there's no way you're going to follow Jesus. And so we back up off all of that, and we look at this context, and we see how significantly important it is for us to be engaged in this process of following Jesus actively, not passively, actively daily so that we will grow and have these qualities in our life in increasing measure that will enable us to be effective and productive and embrace who we are in Jesus, remembering everything that he has done for us. That, my friends and my brothers and my sisters, results in a life that is living vitally, excitedly, significantly, and wonderfully, the relationship of God. That is a follower of Jesus who is embracing their identity in Him. Not running away from it, embracing it with every fiber of their being. And that's the person who is representing the kingdom. That's the person who is being used by God. That's the person who is making a difference in their world for Christ. That's the person God wants us to be. So, the question that we ask ourselves, how is our discipleship training going? How's your regimen? You getting up every morning and, and getting those push-ups? Going out there and doing boot camp spiritually? What's up? You, 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 uh, you're on that di spiritual diet that you're staying away from all that stuff that's harmful to you? How's it going? What you pumping into your system spiritually? How's the training going? I'm serious. How is it going? Something that we can measure. It's time to start taking it seriously. Just as serious as we take health concerns and exercise and diet and every other aspect of it. Because all that stuff's temporary. And all that stuff's going away. This stuff is going to be here forever. So how's it going? How's your training? We want to encourage you in that. One quote, and then I'm finished. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a German theologian during World War II, says, cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Baptism without requiring church discipline. Communion without confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship. Grace without the cross Grace without Christ Jesus. We're offering Christ Jesus. There's nothing cheap about it. And he's asking that we become a serious disciple. Following him. Good days and bad days. 
following him when the doors are wide open and we're being embraced as his disciple and we're getting the pats on the backs and the prayers offered, but following him on the days when the doors are closed and we're running into them and it's not so easy. But we've got to do as Peter says. Folks, we've got to be serious about our training and we've got to start adding to our faith these qualities in increasing measure so that we will be productive and effective in our life of service to Jesus. We invite you to join us in that pursuit. It is wonderful. Sometimes it's difficult, but more often it's glorious because Jesus has already walked that path for us. He's died on the cross for our sins. He's been resurrected so that we can have hope of our own. It starts with that faith that we've talked about in this context. It talks about I mean, well, that faith then leads us to follow Christ. It leads us to repent, to change, to, to, to make our desires more in line with God's. It leads us to, to do that great confession that I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, not just now, but every day. It leads us to putting him on in baptisms. We have, we've had four young men be baptized here recently. Praise God. Amen. It's a part of what God is calling us to do. And we invite you to be engaged in all of that to come and, and, and join us in a f- discipleship process. Follow Jesus together so that we all can enjoy the blessings of heaven together. So we invite you to come while we stand and sing. To Christ be loyal and be true, his dedicate your life to Jesus, Um, how that each one of us need that, Um, that we all need the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us of our sins. Uh, It is a decision that each one of us makes, we need to make, uh, to follow Jesus. So today, Kylie has reached the point where she's ready to make that commitment to Jesus, uh, to make that most important decision of her life and really each and every one of us. Uh, to follow Jesus. So I'll ask you, Kylie, do you believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, sir. We, uh, we're excited for this, but that, the excitement that we have here uh, does not even compare to the excitement that the angels in heaven have right now.
We have another good news this morning, and that is that Rebecca Ashcraft has asked to uh, put on her Lord in baptism this morning. And uh, we have her father here with us, and also uh, uh, a brother in Christ who wants to uh, take her response. And is that, is that right? Would you like to come up? So this is um, Rebecca, and again, this is her father, and her family is, is up there <laughs> saying hi. She brought the whole family. Uh, she's been coming here for a while, so, and they're neighbors of ours, and um, really her and Aislinn have become, have been friends for a long time, and so we've got a chance to know the family, um, and so they've basically become part of the family, and so, and, and that happening, um, she's been coming over here also, and so it's not, it's like a community thing. So it's our family and it's you all that's helped, uh, I guess, show her the truth, and that is that Jesus is, is Lord. And so she's been around that, and it's influenced her enough to where she too wants to put on Christ in baptism. And so, you know, in, in front of many witnesses, I'll ask you the same question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of, of heaven and earth and that he did die for your sins? Say it. Yes. While they're making preparations for the baptisms, we uh, will go ahead and have prayer. We have several prayer cards at this time that we'd like to honor. Have a number more that are confidential. We want to honor them also. Um, so let us pray at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the response to your word. Father, we... We thank you that uh, you are still at work in this world. Father, we pray your, your blessings on, on uh, these two that have responded this morning. Pray that you'd bless and strengthen them and build them up in Christ, help them grow and mature in him. Father, also, we have some that, that uh, need your help and care and, and have asked for it in special, special ways. First, I'd like to pray for um, uh, R.L. Todd. Uh, has a number of issues that he's concerned with, and Father, uh, you know what they are, and we pray that you'd bless him as, as he has need. Father, we pray for Mary Jordan uh, and her job situation. Please bless and guide her in this. Pray that the, the doors of opportunity that are right for her will be opened and you would bless her in her interviews. Father, we pray for John Stoltz, who's uh, quite ill. Father, we, we pray for him as he goes through difficult treatments. We pray for his comfort and healing. For, pray for Janine Maples, uh, whose father recently passed away. Please, please bless her and her family in his passing. Father, we pray for each of us that you'd strengthen us and build us up in Christ. You'd watch over us and guide us through this week. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Have one announcement, uh, a shower today for Shalisa Dumas, 1.30-3 in the uh, family room. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will see you in the morning, and I will Based on your confession, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the church says, Amen. Amen. We also get to welcome more new folks to leave you this morning. Uh, Darren, Shirley, and his daughters, Michaela and Lindley. You guys over here in the back, stand up, wave your hand, shout, scream, let us see you. Everybody welcome them, please. 
Darren uh, has uh, been a member at Pleasant Valley. He's now over in our direction, and we are wel glad to welcome him. Everybody, please, after services, take a minute to personally welcome them, too. Thank you. What a morning. We're going to close with a song that uh, is probably familiar to many of you, although we've never sung it here before. At least, I haven't let it. So I hope many of you know it. If you've been in singing class, you definitely do. So let me hear you sing out. Let's stand together and sing, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Thank you for the beautiful morning that we've had, God. We've talked about training, Lord, and being productive and bring, being effective. And, Lord, what better proof of that this morning than, than what we've seen is we've added two to your family, God. We're so thankful for that. God, we ask you to be with us this week as we continue to train, Lord, to, to be productive and be effective, to bring others to you, God. And we know that, that we need help from that, Lord, from each other, God. And we pray that we're open to that and we ask for help when needed. Lord, be with us throughout this week. In your Son's name that we pray. Amen.